So our client companies do two standard, they, they establish two goals for retention, one for all turnover, one for new hire turnover. So I want you to imagine that if you're in manufacturing, there's a really good chance you lose half your new hires in 60 or 90 days, just a really good chance. And if you win that retention battle, you win the bigger battle. Mm. So, so a client might have a goal that is retain 80% for 60 days. So we'll ask them to do a stay interview, let's say on the fifth day and the 30th day, and the supervisor does them. Then they'll ask five questions. The questions are number one, when you travel to work each day with things you look forward to, because the brain is designed to be protective. It's designed to be defensive. We'll move them to be positive and we'll move them into the here and now because it's day to day things that cause people to stay or leave. The second question is, what are you learning here? And this opens the door to learning, to careers, but it doesn't say careers unless the employee wants to go that way. Because I think a massive mistake companies make is they have career discussions, which plants the seed that you will have one and maybe you won't and makes the assumption people want one and maybe they don't. Mm. Learning is a much more productive term than careers. Mm. So when you travel to work, you say what things you refer to. Two, what are you learning here? Three, why do you stay here? Now, anybody would say, why is that so important? Well, for two big reasons. One is, if I know the answer to number one, when you travel to work each day with things you look forward to, and if I know the answer to number three, why do you stay here? I've got you, because I know what turns you on. Also, question four is, when's the last time you thought about leaving? What prompted it? So the question isn't, have you thought about leaving? It's when. And we're not going to ask that one until we draw the contrast of what things or reasons why you stay. Mm. And most people don't know why they stay, Matt. They'll say, well, I got to pay the bills. So we train leaders to say, no, nah, that's not why you stay. You could leave and pay the bills anywhere because you're good and I'm grateful you don't. I want to know really what makes you stay. Mm. And you've got to make them discover it and announce it to themselves so they learn it. That's the therapist in me coming out. Mm. So you've got, when you travel to work each day with things you look forward to, number two, what are you learning here? Number three, why do you stay here? Number four, when's the last time you thought about leaving what prompted it? Number five, what can I do as your manager to make work here better for you? Mm. When leaders and first line supervisors have done this scores of times for us, when they learn to ask, listen, probe to learn more and take notes, they convert five questions to 25 questions and they learn what's really important. Mm. I love it. Yeah. So the core idea is, I mean, it's uh, you're, you're understanding the drivers for both why someone would want to stay, why would, why they would want to leave. But most importantly, it's you're, you're just by asking this question, you're demonstrating that, Hey, I actually care about you. You know, I, what can I do to help you? And yeah. I, I'm somewhat familiar with Gallup's research. And I know that that's uh, over and over. That's, that's one of the top drivers for engagement and retention that they find in their research is, is there a manager that cares about me? It's concerned about my development. And oh, you, even if you're not perfect at getting it, the solution, right? Just asking the question demonstrates that you care, right? Right. And, and, and I am, not only a big fan of Gallup, but I've also invented an idea that I want to present here to your listeners and have them try it on and see how it fits. And the idea is the most important hours of the day for employee retention and engagement are the two hours after work. That when you're in your car or on the train, you're at the gym hitting a punching bag, you're sitting in a restaurant or bar talking to the bartender, or you're having dinner with your family. This is the time when you're reflecting, when you're decompressing. And over the course of days, weeks, months, and years, Matt, the more positive things you're telling yourself about your day and telling others, the more likely you are to stay and work harder. The more negative you're thinking, the less likely you are to stay and mm -hmm. work, work hard. Mm -hmm. So there's a joke line here, which is when somebody says, how is your day, dear? Nobody says, oh, my day was okay. I just wish we had pet insurance. 
because nobody cares if they have pet insurance. Because the things that make people stay or leave are the things that make them feel good or bad every day. Mm. And I can't tell you what they say over dinner, but I can tell you the subjects. And the subjects are bosses, colleagues, and job duties. Mm -hmm. That's where retention lives. And a few months ago, I wrote a column about this and uh, Forbes picked it up and Forbes reprinted a part of it and said, this really is, and they were buying it, saying this really is what matters. You know, it's people leave for bosses, et cetera, et cetera. So short story here, but funny story. So I was meeting recently in California with a group of the top 25 executives of a pharmaceutical company. And I told this, I relayed all this to them. So picture sitting in a room with 25 chairs and I'm standing, everybody's sitting. And one man became so emotional, he stood up and he said, I so disagree with you. He said, I tell my employees, work-life balance. You go home. You don't think about work. You be with your family. I just, I'm certain you're wrong. And my first inclination was to say, sir, you are one in a million. Now sit down. But (laughs) instead of saying that, I said, you know, let's find out. I said, we have the top 25 executives in your corporation. The CEO bill is in the back. Everybody be honest with me. Raise your arm if in the last week you've talked about your boss over dinner. And everybody raised their arms. And I am convinced that two hours after work are the most important hours. And I am convinced that every manager who's listening to this broadcast is on the menu for dinner every night. 